Hi everybody, uh, this is Samrat Kishore. I welcome you all to the Baseline Show. Uh, this week uh, uh, is is very special uh, because because we have got a lot of activities going on within the Baseline Protocol as well. And for those of you who are tuning us uh, tuning to this show for the first time, please do uh, subscribe to the Baseline channel. We keep making our announcements uh, via this channel, and we do this show every week, Wednesday at noontime EST, uh, as an outreach effort for. Uh, uh, for reaching out to more and more people. Uh, Keith is super distracting right now, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> so so we do we do the show for, as an outreach effort for uh, bringing on more people, more baseliners across the world. Uh, we talk to industry leaders and uh, brainstorm on ideas uh, for, for baselining and understand trends about data sharing and, and multi-party coordination. Um, so in that series, uh, we have uh, Gabriel with us. He's from Cartesi and he's joining us from Brazil. Uh, welcome, Gabriel, to the Baseline Show. It's an honor. Thank you, you. Thank you. No, it's my honor. Excellent. And we have, uh, with Gabriel, we have uh, our other Baseliners as well. We have Mark Remza, we have Keith, we have Andreas, Yoav, and we have Anand also currently off video. And uh, we're going to be kick-starting this uh, episode today with uh, some announcements. So we recently published our blog for February, the Baseline blog, and which is uh, written by Keith. So Keith, would you like to take two minutes just to talk about talk about uh, the blog post and, and what can people gain out of that? Uh, yeah, sure. I think I hit on it last time, but just to uh, you know, kind of sum up again. Now we published, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now that it's out there, right? Uh, so the the original idea, uh, you know, behind the blog was to give uh, everybody kind of a, a glimpse through the uh, looking glass into, uh, you know, how to build a baseline system. Let's kind of, <clears throat> you know, pull away uh, the the shroud from some of the mystery. And then as I was writing that, I'm like, well, you know, we we tend to as more of us gain knowledge about the baseline protocol more. We're you know involved in baseline every day. We take for granted you know where we started, and we kind of constantly go through the cycle where we end up back there where we take for granted you know the starting point, right? So I thought, well, if it's a new kind of blog series, maybe let's start back with the basics, um, a, a blog about the basics. It's a reflection for the speech or the kind of presentation. We did a, an Amsterdam in Amsterdam, a place for people to start to kind of get their, the, the foundation of their mental model set up and how baseline works, the kind of underlying concepts. It's still, so once you, you know, finish reading it, you should be kind of really primed for digging into some of the deeper material and really understanding uh, what a baseline implementation uh, would, would look like, right? And that's ready for the next part of the series, um, which is TBD at this point in time for release. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, that's that's the idea behind it. Yeah. Thank you. Samuel. Thanks. Thanks, Keith. And uh, the other announcement, which is uh, which makes this week special, is also published publication of our roadmap for 2023. So we recently also published our baseline protocol roadmap. Uh, I will post the links uh, to both of these things uh, along with the video so that people can get access to it. But this is a very aspirational year for us. Uh, as a, as a as a group, and uh, we intend to achieve a lot. Uh, and there's of course there are some things flowing back from the previous year as well. But I'm very excited, very pumped up for for the year ahead. Um, so with that, I, I I come back to our guest for today. We're going to be learning a little bit about uh, optimistic rollups. How optimistic should we be about optimistic rollups? And uh, and yeah, we will. We will also learn a bit more about Cartesi. So let's start with uh, with Gabriel. Your introduction, your background, your motivations of what you're doing. I, from you know, in our previous call, I understand that you've been in the space at the right times, at the right places for a very long time now. So let's let's hear a bit about you, and then we move on to Cartesi, and then to the to topic of uh, optimistic. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I've been working in this space since 2016. I was just uh, finishing my degree at college, uh, got hired by Consensus, did a bunch of cool shit there. It, there is, it, it was a very interesting time to be inside the space. 
Um, I stayed there for a little while, like something, two years and something. And then I left them to join Terminal. And we were trying to do so many nice stuff. Pivots here, pivots there. It became Flake at that time. It didn't make much sense anymore for me. And uh, I have a friend from college, uh, from college that was working at a small company doing some blockchain stuff, very weird things. They were saying something about proving computation. And I was like, oh, what the hell are you talking about? And then I learned a little bit about Cartesi uh, on Tokyo's um, Osaka's DevCon. And then a, f a few months, a uh, few months after I joined the company, like very, very brief strokes that that is my my history with blockchain. Um, and yeah, um, for today, I, I would like us to have a conversation about rollups. I feel like many of you guys already know so much about it, but I, it's always interesting to, to uh, talk about it again. Like, like what Keith was saying before, uh, we take things, things for, gra for granted. Like we already know so much about why we're doing things and we forget uh, why they were there in the first place. And uh, for people joining the ecosystem, it's like very confusing. And uh, so I saw that people have already discussed a little bit about zero knowledge and more, more or less like what zero knowledge rollups are, but why rollups really? Like, why do we need rollups? What, what is the point of having it? I guess for me, uh, it was quite clear because uh, I was in the space uh, for some years. And I saw what was happening with Ethereum. Like I saw many applications getting to the network, uh, th thriving and thriving to some extent and trying to build nice stuff only to be uh, replaced uh, by a new industry being adapted to, to the space. And really uh, through the process of what we've been calling like gentrification, being outpriced for their... Um, for, for the sweet spot of how much people are willing to pay for, for the application they are trying to, to play with, right? And um, through time, we saw many uh, attempts to, to try to fix this, state channels, plasma, side chains, competing networks, but really they didn't really address the, the reality of things. Basically they were postponing and giving some oxygen to the industry to have time to figure it out. And I think like rollups is really, um, it's really very promising because nobody seems to have figured it out a hundred percent, but many intelligent people uh, do agree that there is something there. It's worth looking uh, into it and still like try to figure out the nitty gritty bits of details that needs to be sorted in order to, to make it 100% decentralized, as secure as possible, and of course, give us all the, the power that we need, right? And, but then we get to power, because at, at the end of the day, we are trying to uh, increase TPS, we are trying to increase transaction complexity, like really like CPU memory intensive tasks, and, uh, we always hit the, the the limits of whatever is trying to expand uh, the Ethereum cap capacity, right? Like I feel if we look right now to what the main uh, players in the net and the space they are trying to do rollups for Ethereum, they they kind of end up copying Ethereum a little bit, and. Uh, I feel we are repeating a cycle to some extent because we are giving some more oxygen to the system, but we are gonna run out at some point what we do then. Um, but like I was saying, it's an open question for everybody. And uh, when it comes to zero knowledge, there's a lot of great stuff coming uh, because of it. There's a lot, of, a lot of new possibilities, even in privacy, really, because uh, for instance, for now, uh, zero, zero knowledge rollups are now really about privacy, but zero knowledge itself, it's giving us that possibility. And um, the question really comes to like, 
how much capacity can zero knowledge really give us uh, when it comes to transaction power? Uh, I feel like whenever we are in a good place with zero knowledge, we can be even better to some extent. Uh, I'm always talking about the power, right? Like it's different characteristics, but when it comes to power, if you can do great with zero knowledge, you probably can do much better with optimistic rollups because they are simpler. And but then, if you see what's going on with uh, Arbitron and Optimism, uh, the main players, uh, they still have this idea of public networks to some extent, where you're sharing resources with other applications. And um, that is basically what Ethereum already does. Uh, it is really good for composability to have interaction with apps. And uh, it's great. But at the same time, you're falling back to the same trap again, where you can have a, an application be so successful that then maybe it's difficult to run other dApps inside the same space. There's two competing for resources. That is to say that I think it's important that we start start look, really looking to um, the dApp-centric rollups or app-specific rollups or any new key name people come up with because right now it's not really settled. But this idea of having a rollup specific for a, an application and try to figure out how to go from there to still keep the same level of um, communication, interactivity between the applications, such and such. And, uh, and that's when maybe we get to a point that we don't see this problem be uh, reproduced again and again and again. And we reach to a point that now we can just know that the scalability is really on the DAP itself. It's not a, a common public problem to all applications. I, I feel like I talked a lot already. <laughs> no, no, no. I think, I think Gabriel, yeah, so, you, so, yeah. so just, to, just to throw a number in here, right? So um, the the um, yesterday, all top fifteen rollups combined um, had just two x Ethereum volume. So there is no danger that I any of those are going to be maxed out. Anytime soon. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it's like it's like anybody wants to look at that altobeat.com, just go check it out. It's like it's like Arbitrum is like th that's combined, right? Arbitrum was like at six odd TPS yesterday, um, compared to like 13 for 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 N not that it could it, it, you know Arbitrum could do like a couple of thou, right? With, without breaking a sweat, but there's just no, there's just no activity, yeah. right? There's, there's no, even if I had like, so even if I had 10 crypto kitties, like on Arbitrum right now, working at the same time, it's still not a problem, right? It's like, you can run gods on chain and, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like Axie infinity and, and, and shit like that on the same roll up and you would still not break a sweat. Okay, so it's like that scalability right now is not the problem. I I would add this though, right? Cuz you know, this this group of folks here thinks a lot about enterprise systems, you know, connecting to blockchain, right? And what does that that scalability picture look like? And the truth is um there are enterprise systems today that are just for single companies that actually have higher TPS than entire blockchains, right? Because they're they're doing supply chain things, IoT things. They're getting absolutely hammered, yeah. right? So a, a really intriguing thing that could happen in the future is that you know if one of those kind of use cases comes to blockchain, it could break one. It could break a roll up. Um, and it's not a it's not a topic that I see discussed very very often, uh, because you, now you're you're trying to optimize for 
you know, transaction throughput and decentralization all at once, which is a very, you know, challenging enterprise architecture to, to, to get to. So, 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 so Gabriel, I, 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 I would ask the question, right? What is Cartesi doing to, you know, to sim, to simulate, you know, that kind of, you know, you know, stress test, right? Uh, uh, as if you will, because uh, you mentioned that th this is something that you guys are really into in terms of, you know, bit, High, high performance compute essentially. Yes, yes. I, I wouldn't say it's the main focus, but it's one of them. Uh, currently, uh, we've been playing with applications that haven't been tested in blockchain yet. Uh, some of the games we ported, uh, one of our friends just did it on a weekend just for fun. Like, again, Kim Cortez played Doom and uh, he ported Doom yeah. to it. Yeah. And uh, it's just in a different. Uh, category entirely in the sense. So if we're thinking about simple transactions, uh, things that are in the ca simpler category, like let's say Bitcoin transactions, maybe you could have a improved version of a rollup that would absolutely hammer uh, and smoke Cortesi 100%. But then uh, we are also focusing on content scalability, which was something that I would address later, but since we are there, <laughs> um, which is like, we have decades of knowledge in software development about uh, processes, libraries, frameworks, operation systems, and whatnot. And we simply have not ported it to blockchain yet. Like, yes, blockchain is something new, like, like you had a new database, really? Yeah, that's technically it, but then, it, it does not integrate right now. Like you do some adapters, you bring information back and forth, you do a lot of translations, but it's not really like you can uh, implement a SAP system entirely inside a, a, a blockchain. Like you can integrate those for sure. Maybe that's even the better uh, approach, uh, arguably, but then suddenly, be. yeah, right. Oh, why, would then, I, yeah. why would I, why would I, why would I, you know, so it's, why would I, do run SAP on a on a blockchain because it makes no sense. I don't have a double no, no, yes, yes. in in an yes, yes, SAP but, system. So I was like, here's why, the thing. why in the world would I would I but here's the thing you that? can't it, you can't that that's not even in the cards. No. So I mean uh if you want to if you have for instance uh you want to play with the DAX but you don't want to do the whole uh matching system the the order book matching system and you you could just import a Java framework already built on that, years of te battle tests. And now you have to suddenly do it all over again and you cannot even do an MVP with that. It, it might not even be that good, but uh, that performant, but here's the thing, it's working. You could get started with that, but you can't, it's not possible. So one of the things we do address as well is like, instead of being um, uh, based on EVGAM on the rollup side, we are based on RISC-5, uh, which is a platform processor. You can have an operation system. It can run any language. And that's the change as well that we are trying to bring. Like uh, now you can do things like uh, image recognition using OpenCV inside your DAP. What for? You tell me. Uh, that's up to you. Like that's a new possibility for your DAP. And, uh, and you can use game engines that people have been playing with for so long. Uh, there's so yeah. just so many possibilities. It's like like we're introducing computer all over again. Like, what can you do with computer and internet? I don't know. It's up for the people to figure it out. Yeah, but why do I need why do I need this this shit anchored on 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 chain? It's like it's like it's like literally. I mean, it's like it's like I know games that are running on like a five cluster subnet on on Avalanche, and I'm like. So you're running this on on AWS in a in a in a uh, you're running this actually on an on on a K Kubernetes cluster. So it's like, are you are you are you really shitting me right now? It's like it makes why it's it that is that is all complete bullshit. It's yeah. like it's like if you need a chain, right? You have a double spend problem. You have a I can I can I. I I just use digital, digital, digital signature, right? I use DIDs and 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 I I can generate data integrity, right? I don't I don't need anything else. 
right? It's like it's like I I just I just make sure that I I I have I can I can check that my that my keys are are I can publicly validate that my keys are are active. Why else do I need do I need the the chain unless I have a double spend problem, right? Unless I have a multi party you know trust deficit problem where where you know uh, I need a verifiably correct compute instance. Right, that I can, that 100%. I can then, that I can, that I can then verify on chain, and I use the 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 provable time linearization aspect of of an L one as my as the as the primary thing. That's all I needed for, unless I have a double spend problem. If I have a double spend problem, we're back to the to to yes, you need you need some form of of uh, either consensus or you need to have have um you need to be able to have the data to prove or prevent double double spend on the yeah. l1 in which case you have you either are as optimistic rollups do um you need you have a you have a fraud you have fraud proofs or as ck rollups do you you put the, the data directly um, on chain by by using uh, by using uh, zk rollup proofs yeah, but that that's so. It's like it's like those are very specific problems focused on double spend and double spend only. And then we have the reason why 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 it's important to for for that is your rollups are islands, right? They're like the Greek islands, right? And Greek islands that don't have good ferry systems between them really suck. You know why? Because no one goes there. Right, and we should, you know, we should, like, we should, yeah, we should find an equivalent of greenwashing for the blockchain world, you know, by yeah, people. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so, so you need like, like, like a good ferry system, aka bridges, right? But the bridges are for assets, right? I can move data back and forth. That's like boom. That's not. That's not unless I, I have to prove a state, right? And 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 then you know I need to 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 validate that. Oh yeah, you're what you. Did over there is out was is actually provably correct, right? So that's why you need zero knowledge proof, mm -hmm. right? Because then you can move stuff, right? Right. So it, it's it's so again specific problems for you know specific solutions for very specific problems. If I have a gaming app, who the cares if this is running on a on a on a, a, a on a chain? It doesn't matter. It's like it's like run it on on a fat EKS cluster and 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 rock you know rock rock it's like you know it's like they're not what like like Fortnite skins you trade Fortnite skins okay then I'm back to my to my double spend problem because I have I have valuable assets and then I have illiquid assets that I'm that I'm that I'm trading on a on a um on an exchange that's not registered. Okay, that's that's an that that's an in, that's an interesting notion. So otherwise, you know, all of this stuff is is like entirely meaningless and 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 vapid. Lots right? of lot um, of hot air, hot air. <laughs> right. So let's so, let's focus on double spend problem, and then we're yeah. we're in, we're in, we're 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 in business. Otherwise. Yeah. Gabriel, I would I would request you know if if what we could do is we could maybe learn more about what Cartesi is doing and and yeah, you know, henceforth yeah. henceforth you know maybe form our thoughts around it because uh, what you what you mentioned also sounds very very powerful and uh, and yeah it's you know the good thing is that we we get together and we brainstorm on these shows and and then we uh, we do transport things which which are really valuable for us uh, as a group as well and and you know let's see so 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 yeah why don't you introduce Cartesi and if you have any slides also you can present I, I've been able sharing it before you do though I want to yeah, jump in on the other side and, yeah, and just just disagree with Andreas to yeah. some degree because it doesn't happen enough absolutely yeah absolutely. sure Absolutely right. Let's push back, man. Let's get let's, let's, let's get let's get going, let's man. Let's stuff. let's let's make this interesting for the viewers. <laughs> yeah. There's a million, there's a million people, million companies out there yeah. going to solve that pragmatic stuff. 
but we also need places like Carthesia that are just going to push yeah. the boundary in every direction, not knowing yeah. maybe exactly what it's going to be used for, because we don't know what's out there yet. So not to say that it's the only thing we should have, but on top of all the stuff you mentioned, let's have those too, right? Let's expand the horizon, right? Let's go beyond yeah. the edge. Carthesia. I I I, the I, iPhone, I can't exactly the iPhone for compute. That's what that's what Keith is Keith, Keith is ad, advocating for. The the, I, the 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 Keith is the Steve Jobs of of distributed com, compute. I tell you that. Yeah, I don't know of anyone who would want to run SAP on a decentralized system, but I'm but if someone is doing that, I'm really curious about it. Please, please reach out to me. I this I am conversation really, is making me want to do it. Like this I, 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 I do it right now. So yes. but but like to, to bring it back to Cartesia, it's like if 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 I'm you know using Cartesia, I put the token in, uh, look at like an arcade game, what am what am I getting out? Like what, like what, like what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the thing that uh, is it more, most succinctly that Cartesi is really all about as a, as a roll up and other things. So I have actually two, two examples that I, I wanted to bring up to awesome. that kind Please, of yes. counterpoint to what Andrew is saying. Like, yes, if you are very prag pragmatic, I know a hundred percent. You're going to have like your engineers like nitty pick and really drill down to whatever is the actual problem and solve it as simple as, as possible. But then people want to do silly things. Like uh, right now, it's very uh, boring for people to, who like to play chess because whenever they go online, they can just, uh, they don't, they never know if they are playing against a real person or if it is just a person uh, playing also the table with a bot. And one of the things uh, we seen in these hackathons that we particip participated is this guy came up with this idea of AI bots that play uh, chess. So basically you submit your agent, you code it, you say how it should, uh, uh, how, what is the strategy of it? And now you can bet on the, the winning or losing of the match based on your agent. And you know that the thing is fair because uh, you you have the verification of the computation happening on both sides. You don't have the, to dispute that. Um, and another game that Ryan uh, kind of like made me remember is uh, Dinder. Uh, it's kind of like, um, I forgot the name of the game. You know that game where you have several colors and you need to shoot a color to make a straight line in a way? Uh, Candy Crush, yeah, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a mix and match of Candy Crush with a battle game. So it feels like Pokemon to some extent. So you have uh, characters on your screen, and you can power it up uh, by smashing the the candies, so to speak, uh, and the colors match to the players, the characters. I mean, and that will boost or uh, decrease the level of your attack and that goes with a uh, with the gameplay, right? And that is all verified as well in uh, in the Cartesi's uh, optimistic for life. I know it's silly because we're talking games, but it really displays a little bit of how people can be using this later for serious stuff. Uh, well, but here's the thing: they don't take too much time coding everything from scratch, inventing a logarithmic uh, library because it's not available on Solidity yet to make things it, work. It, I think the gaming example is actually, it's like, it's it's a big focus area and interest area, you know, across web D. And I, I think it makes sense because yes, independent servers on the AWS may be cheaper to, to run and you can run a bit like a gaming business there. But for the players uh, that get invested in the game, you can be really sad when that, that server gets shut down someday. Right. Mm -hmm, so yes. if if you have these games that are architected in a way to be decentralized and, you know, the, the players can engage with it anytime, you know, in this decentralized system, like just put the quarter in, if, if you will, at any time, you actually have much more longer lasting communities that that are in place there. I think that's that, that that's the, the undercurrent. I think that actually makes Web3 Gaming 
really stick around long term is that the the it's ownership of the community and it's you know sustainable long term yep and then to talk about like more um meaningful to some extent things uh we're seeing in east san francisco uh a, a pair of guys uh on the hackathon they use cartesi to solve things like uh the mango hack so the mega hack, i don't like calling the mega hack because it was not really a hack basically they just uh pumped the price of a token collateralized got the low and, and never returned the the funds of course and uh one of the problems with that is because they didn't have the um they didn't have the first the computational power yes but on our roll up they could but then they didn't have the expertise or didn't build up the algorithms to make the um, uh, how to say the risk assessment of assets to see how much they can uh, allow for the risk on a loan right it's ve something very basic in the web 2.0 world and then it's a trivial thing to avoid yet it happened and it could to some extent happen to uniswap as well and other lending protocols i mean um and here's the thing this uh pair of guys basically they imported some very well known open source library to do this kind of risk assessments probably not even the best one but basically they displayed in a proof of concept that you could have updates to a smart contract on inside ethereum doing a risk assessment constantly through a rollups to to check the health uh the healthy of the the asset you can even um argue that you can improve the parameters of the such rollup because it's very specific. It, you're not meant to be doing much uh, off chain, basically just crunching numbers to even have uh, um, faster updates to the chain. So you can always be uh, as correct as possible before uh, making the loans. So that's one application that we can like straight up see that it improves the industry as a whole because. The thing is, it, may, it, it is really easier to just trust um, what other people built before. Like you can evaluate whether or not it's trustworthy, yes, but then you do not need to know every nitty gritty details of how that thing works and just build on top of that. That's, that's how we've been doing things so far and Web3 maybe kind of forgot about that. Sure. I mean that that is it, it, again to 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 outsource heavy compute somewhere, right? Is is and then import and uh, the results is 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 great, right? So if now now let me let me play the decentralization maximalist, right? It's like there. It's like okay, prove to me that the that the that the risk assessment was not manipulated. You should run your node. You should run a node and dispute the results. Okay, so then I need a dispute. Then, then I need, I need, uh, um, I need uh, uh, to constantly check, right? So I can't check on chain whether 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 what you're doing is right. So I need to constantly watch. So I have what's called the watcher problem, right? So not not necessarily. Yeah, not necessarily. Let's problem. say, no, 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 not necessarily. Depends on the the source of the data. I never said anything about the source of the data. It can just be scrubbing the Ethereum at itself. Yeah, I know, but the but the risk assessment. So even if you publish your 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 even if you publish your 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 algorithm, right? You need to some someone else needs to then run the same platform. Yeah. That you do, in order to validate your result and then. That's the principle Dis with Ethereum net. Dispute it. But but yeah. that's not but but that's not my counter argument is that's that's not that, yeah, but that's then I'm then I back I'm back to to a consensus algorithm. And then uh, as soon as I have a consensus algorithm that I need to then, you know, now I dispute or trust and two need to come to consensus. Then say a third one comes in and says, no, it's like it's like and then a fourth, a fifth. And then Not necessarily. Sudden... I, I don't think. Okay, I think there's something missing here. Um, we it's are. Proof, we can do the fraud proof, proof of correct. No, no, no. Uh, you need it. 
you need a zero knowledge we, proof of of of, of no, uh, correctness yeah not necessarily so so, so so i've had the same arguments with every single optimistic roll-up right the argument is the following you are creating a a a, a compute power arms race because because if the, the more heavy compute you utilize um, as as an as inputs into your into your transactions by outsourcing, right? The more you are you are um, you are uh, um, the the more you're forcing a challenger to run this to have the same compute power. That's currently okay. obviously not a problem. It's obviously currently not a problem because because no one is using anything. Right, so it's like it's it's easy, but if you're if you're actually going and talking, oh, now we're running risk risk assessment. Now we're deriving, now we're deriving forward rates for 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 markets based on based on that based on that input. Then it becomes 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 a real becomes a real challenge. Because, I don't see because, because then you I don't see run, that. That's as a big of a problem as you're stating it to be, because you know you have all the transitions of your machine as things moves along, and that actually becomes a problem. You can always uh, change the node to publicize as well the state transitions in between. So let's say you have a billion cycle of CPU there, you can uh, put every ten thousand, every million, and then people can do just a statistical sampling of the transitions and get you on the hook for a piece of the computation. Oh, so you're publishing something and that is and 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 I should I should I should I should trust that I should trust that I should trust that data. So here's the thing. Um <laughs> again I need yes, to run the you should not necessarily thing trust <laughs> that's 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 the best scenario for sure. But if you're having something that big you don't need to necessarily be the one doing the 100% of the uh, process. Every person can be checking different pieces of the, the process. It's in a way similar to, in a way, not truly, not exactly, but in a way that's similar to what the zero knowledge proof does. You don't need to run the full thing to be able to check whether or not the thing is uh, correct. I yeah, mean, you're doing do, you really wanna, do you really yeah, want to, do you really want to, do you really want to uh, uh, put it put to risk a very big pool of stake staked money just just because you think people cannot run your computation? Is that it? Really? It's not yeah. something really that easy to falsify because you, you need to be falsifying a very strategic way to give hashes to do in between that makes sense, but at the same time gets you to the exact uh, end result that you wish for. And then that is not that simple. That is not that simple. It becomes ever more complex as the software gets complex as well. Um, if I if I do that and I run flash loans on a on a on a um, on a uh, on a flash loans L tunes that I'm that I'm. So it's like it's like it's like there are, there are believe me there are very sophisticated scenarios and it all comes back bringing this back to baseline right so multi party coordination under zero knowledge right so the 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 reason why you run like uh, um these you, you know it's like you're right darks are nothing but is is basically large volume statistical sampling that you're that you're that you're that you're simulating, right? Because what do you use? You use a a you use, you know, interactive oracle proofs, right? That you're just like you, you do a, a very specific transformation for, and then you're sampling a very large space, right? Um, the the but the point is, unless you publish it, the, the the point is, I can you can you can verify that. You can you can you can compress all of that and you can verify it on chain, which means I don't need to have this type of of, of computational capability available. This can be again decentralized. I'm putting my my decentralization maximalist on. Not that I that I that I would. But here's the thing. Disagree with you. That that decentralization cap is not working that good though, because. Uh... Yes, I can verify the computation, but I can still be censored if I cannot run the computation, right? 
That's I'm, why I'm you have, arguing. That's why you have. I'm, that's why you have something like Fairfire.soul on 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 uh, um, that you can run on on a um, on an L1, right? So you can do. You can. You can. No, no, no. I'm not can, talking about the. Uh, I'm not talking about the end result being correct. I'm talking about not even being able to participate on it because now there's just a single node, a handful of nodes that can accept my my transaction. How that's being enforced? That's an open problem right now with uh, rollups as well, with sequences and whatnot. But I don't mm -hmm. see that Many being people. very targeted by the decentralized right. enterprises. Well as as you know, much. For, enterprises don't really care about censorship because they run their own rollup and then they work with their partners on that rollup. Uh, and then that's it. I mean, Ryan can 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 tell you a lot about that um, from from his experience with. Um, Provide and I can tell you that you know talking to the likes of like AT and T, Verizon, um, Ford, GM, Denso, and so forth, they're like, ah, uh, yeah, no, it's like we'll run our own and 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 we have ours, and it's like it's like that's the 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 enterprise paradigm is like we run our own shit, and you know you come and then we're actually putting we are then can put something on chain that proves everything's. Correct. Correct. So it's good for the auditors, and that's it. End of story. So it's like, it's like, and and then they they typically don't have like scenarios where they need to do like billions of transactions a day, right? They may have a few hundreds of thousands, maybe a million transactions with their partners in the largest um, in the largest cases. So and I that's, think that's oh well and good. A hundred percent, that's very valid. But I, what I'm saying is like, that's not a hundred percent of the situations. That's not all the scenarios. So that's true. That's true. What yeah, I'm saying true. is like, okay, you, you get you get to be able to, for, of course, do something simple as a risk analysis written in any language that you want. As long as it's, uh, you, you're able to, to do, um, Programs like what we're doing, smart contracts and whatnot, you can do that. Yes. But then uh, the cost of doing that is going to be much more expensive. Of, of course, if that the problem uh, is important enough, then you pay the cost. But then it becomes, it, it's a constant that you have to initiate any project. At all times, you have this friction because we already have all this knowledge when we are not using it as is. We are always re-implementing things, porting things over and over and over again. At some point, if the cost uh, of having zero knowledge in the world is that um, good to pay for, maybe in 50 years, we don't even talking about, we are not going to be talking about that because we can have Intel chips, zero knowledge, and we can run even uh, operation systems. But that's not a reality of today. And yeah. I've, of course, for big enterprises, they can pay the upfront cost for that. But for smaller startups, uh, two people's teams, they're trying to do something nice and get things going. They're screwed. They're really screwed if they try I, to. I, I, yeah, with I, their completely, I completely, I completely hear you. Now here's, here's the other, other interesting bit, right? And that's again, where you're coming to digital assets, right? As soon as you touch a digital, digital assets right it's like it's like they 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 right now you have you have uh, regulatory enforcement actions coming down or being actively threatened which means it's like you don't make sure you're OFAC compliant like you're looking at time at rikers right so it's like we're at that point no we're at that point right now and i kid you not um there's like uh, mica was just passed in October in, in Europe, which is the first digital asset framework that is now going to be applied across 27 uh, member, member, member states, which is good, right? On the one hand. On the other hand, right, now the the sort of like the the free flow is over because because um, you need to be able to be compliant, right? And you need to have the tooling to be compliant. Unless you're just doing gaming and doing other stuff with where, where where the value that's at stake is not large, then who cares, right? But as soon as there's there's any any amount of money involved, and you're moving value 
you're 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 up the creek. You need compliance instrumentation and all of that. And it can be done in a in a decentralized or federated way, or you know, it's like. Uh, but you need zero knowledge stuff for that, and 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 it's it's uh, it's it's possible. But it we need to actively push the that that um, envelope because there are legitimate use cases where people want to maintain their privacy while at the same time being um, compliant. And we we want to get rid of 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 as many intermediaries as we as we can. So we don't have to have to have people hold the bag for us. Right and and um, you know enterprises there too. It's like I don't want to have have to hold it back for for anybody else but me. Right, Ryan, talk, can you can you tell us a little bit about those scenarios that you're encountering yeah. where you're like yeah where you're like like uh, no I'm not gonna hold your bag. It's like I'm gonna hold only my bag, but I don't trust you anyway. So right? so so and I'll phrase this back to a question to to, to Gabriel to kind of think about. Because you know, when we're when when you think about these B two B enterprise landscapes, and this is an issue that we we look at very deeply at provide is you know B two B also doing B two B from like large corp corporation to to small corporation, right? Of course, the large corporation they can acquire any kind of enterprise they enterprise architecture they want. They they want like the PRVD stack. They can run that, um, get commercial support. Awesome, right? And we also open source that, so the, the smaller folks can run on the on their own. But you know, from the Cartesi per perspective, like what, like how, what are your thoughts around you know these you know smaller um, entities, you know that you know that want to work with you know decentralized tech in coordination to to larger entities? Like, are, are there use cases or 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 perspectives you have, you know, in that domain of, of you know, different entities of different sizes, you know, coordinating through each other through Cartesi. Hmm. I personally haven't heard about anything related to that, like any attempts to be doing that. I guess we are too in a too early of stage uh, to to have this kind of questions being flowing around. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't know, really, I don't know. But if I if I think about how uh, Cartesi have been doing things in the past, I guess we will always try to 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 anticipate the necessities of those trying to use the technology to to somehow try to ease the impact on them if possible. But uh, to be honest, I have no idea. I have no idea because. Yeah. It, exactly. This is a different it's, beast. Yeah, it, it's it's it's. I asked you a very niche, <laughs> niche yeah. question. Yeah, but, but so. Gabriel, your your views your views in general are much much appreciated. I think I think mm -hmm. uh, you 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 have a lot of clarity on on these things, which I really appreciate. Um, there's one question which came for the group, and I'm going to read that out from the chat, which is from Paolo. Um, ZK rollups also need computing power to generate ZK proofs every single time in optimistic rollups. Rollups uh, need to run the full thing only when there's a challenge. So I think that so I think Paolo was trying to support somebody's point there. Um, okay, and you know uh, I just realized that we are 50 minutes in to the show, and I absolutely didn't realize where the time flew. Thank you so much, Gabriel. <laughs> your your this chat has been so engaging, and uh, but but you know where do we go to learn more about Cartesi and and you know how do we how do we get engaged? How do I yeah. play a game? How do I yeah, play I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you can definitely go to the Cartesi website and check the docs. Uh, and pretty soon we are gonna be releasing as well a new tab inside a, the site of showcases. We are getting all these uh, hackathon projects, uh, other company partners uh, that have been doing things with Cartesi, so people can have a sense of what is being developed. Uh, being developed uh, inside the, the Cartesi architecture. Yeah. Sure, sure. And, and you know, as you may have guessed, the baseline is more focused on digital supply chain, more of corporate stuff, right? We try and we are trying and, and, and bringing in multi-parties, uh, which are largely corporates, right? So why should, why should, why would you think that people should care about Cartesi? Uh, what do you have in, uh, have for them, for the, for the large businesses? I mean, for the very large businesses, I guess 
I'd say it's easier to bootstrap things and uh, test things out and um, really to do MVPs. But really, if you think about it, um, if somehow you can still do things on zero knowledge, I guess it makes more sense for them to go that route because um, uh, at any given point, you're not reproducing computation all over again. You just do the proofs at once and the other side uh, have a very small footprint to verify that uh, instead of being uh, another validator node, right? Um, so I guess it really depends on what applications they are looking for. If they are looking to play with the ecosystem and see how things work, with the minimal uh, impact in, on their development size, with the minimal costs, sure. And But I don't know, it's it, it's the different public. Okay. So what we can do is we can probably engage with Mu a little more. We have a very able uh, mesh team doing baseline work full time. So I think we could we could find some synergies uh, there, maybe on a subsequent call and, and then see how uh, baseline on Cartesi can Missing and Cartesi can can go together. Um, one last question: Are you going to eat Denver? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Flying out next can week. I ask, yeah, very excited. Can I ask one more question? So, what's your yeah, top yeah. use case, Gabriel? What's what's the top use case you've seen Cartesi used for? More often than not, people just think of games whenever we finish explaining Cartesi. They go straight there. Goes so they're what yeah, they're they're running you. Unity on 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 they're they're running Unity on, on <laughs> and, and no and... yes no yet <laughs> but we but we see we see some 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 people trying to to uh, uh, compile things uh, from Unity to to Cortese. and then we get to a point like okay maybe you should just be doing the logic. You don't need to hand, render things, right? Okay. <laughs> Inside Cortez. Yeah, yeah. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just like, okay, 3D rendering at that rate, is, 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 that's an interesting We, did, an interesting we did have one project that was doing uh, programmatic NFTs. So that's a funny thing, because uh, right now, F NFTs are JPEGs and PNGs uh, stored elsewhere, and you just have hash for it, right? But these guys, they're, they're like, okay, but we want to have the proof that the NFT is just exactly this. And if you lose the PNG or whatever, you can just go back in time and reproduce the transaction again and you get the same NFT all over. Yeah. So I think what would be interesting is to have, to have uh, so, so, so we had with Tree Trunk, we had, we, ha we, ha we, had, we had made NFTs into web pages with then, I mean, we had zero knowledge proofs for for authenticity. So and 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 ran this on 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 IPFS or you know using IPNS. So the interesting thing was the big challenge was to to have rendering of um to to have like to have like movies videos like that are that are basically in injected into 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 uh, the page. Um, into the page right so it's like because you have to have the entire file which is like really big right so it's it would be much better if you could inject it into there and then something so because it's ipfs so i could see that 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 you could run this this sort of like rendering engine and then inject that into 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 a frame on on an on an ipfs web page that's where Kurt, I think Cartesi could could actually shine for 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 that because now you can prove that all this all this stuff is actually properly properly updated and the quote unquote GIF or the 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 generative uh, um, art is 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 actually correct. So it's like because we had someone with an artist who wanted to go. Oh, I want this to be in the morning. It should look you know. Like morning and then the evening, yeah. it should look like in the evening. And I was like, okay, then we need like a five gigabyte, you know, I'm like, oh my God. This is <laughs> but so with Cartesi, that would be a a, a actually entirely doable. So yes. um um with a with a with 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 um you know verifiable authenticity of the generative art. So that I can I can totally totally Excellent. see as a as a Excellent. as a as a very cool as a very cool uh, as a very cool use. 
have yeah, started getting me as well. <laughs> interesting <laughs> interesting and uh, this is very interesting everyone and you know do do share more material if if there's something which we can share with our community you know happy to do that as well and do join baseline uh, slack as well if you have the time and explore uh, what we're doing um so so yeah if if there are no more questions i, I guess we're towards the end of today's show oh i, I have one more i have yeah, one yeah, more <laughs> gabriel when i when are you showing up again on the uh, for the l2 standards working group the <laughs> following <Interesting> one, <laughs> not not the next one because i'll be flying but the following one okay <laughs> <laughs> just I just guilt tripping you my friend just guilt, yeah. just guilt just guilt tripping you yeah when i had so this call with him he was mentioning it that yeah you know i've been missing us we's missing some is and that's going to be there on the show i said yeah probably yes <laughs> <laughs> he was like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> so yeah interesting and uh, and yeah thank you thank you gabriel for what you're doing uh, with the open source communities as well and and you know katiz he joined uh, ea as well and and you guys have um you know started doing things there as well so so kudos to all the work and uh, we hope to get you back here sometime maybe we you know deep dive a little more on some of the use cases where base lining could come together and 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 you know vice versa so um so yeah that brings us to the end of today's show uh, thank you all for the very you know the amazing thoughts and 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 the very engaging discussion uh see you next week with uh, another hot air topic which is ztna <laughs> hope to hope to get there uh, very very soon and um, and yeah do uh, you know do subscribe to to our channel and follow us on twitter as well um see you all next week cheers hey guys <laughs>